All right, guys. You guys want to blow up your back? Sorry, blow my back up. You want a mass building back workout? Try this. You want bulging lats? You want Tyrannosaurus tra traps? You guys want lats like Dorian Yates? With half the work and half fucking genetics? You want to figure out how to not work hard, get big? You want, this is the shortcut channel. somewhere else. Like your fa favorite? We can go over here. We can go to the other side. I'm looking at the, mer at the mercy of these fucking people. <laughs> okay. This is my first round pick. <laughs> yeah. You went from the from one machine that's too new to be in another gym to this one's too old to even exist anymore. It's true. They pulled this out of a dumpster in fucking Illinois somewhere. We want that. <laughs> I remember that fucking flex fitness piece. <laughs> oh, it's too fucking low. Okay. Okay, what was the question? The question was, this person wrote me telling me they had a, uh, let's see their name actually, why not, you know? Their picture, their profile picture is a cat, so that's cool with me. Animal lovers unite. It's a cat. It's a cat doing a fish face. Thick, thickle, thickless Modge. Anyway, Thickless is having a problem engaging his lats or her lats. I'm not sure what it is. The cat is having trouble engaging its lats. So basically, when people are pressing, this whole concept of engaging your lats is like, I don't wanna just be pressing for pressing sake and like rocking on my shoulder and using my, just my body as leverage. People see the head rocking, people see the chest lifting, but if I'm not engaging my lats like I wasn't there, it's just the bar moving, right? So the idea is for us to get into this position where I'm set here, so this is my starting, the depth of my press, even if I'm starting out here, let's say. Let's say I'm starting here with my hands and this is me holding the bar. I don't wanna be here. My idea is to corkscrew my arms in and then pull my lat down. Then I can flare a little on elbow wherever I want that allows shoulder to drop. But the idea is I wanna be here and then corkscrew into lat and then open. And then pull back so when I go to pull, I'm literally doing a lat, I'm pulling in like a row Imagine you're rowing that weight in, so I'm squeezing that weight in, so my chest is lifted now, and when I go to drive, my lats extend. They're obviously not gonna extend that far, we're only gonna extend to where shoulder stays down, but my lats extend, and then I pull back into lats, so I'm stabbing into the middle of my back, I'm pulling lats in, rocking off. Pulling lats in, rocking off. So if I don't feel intense pressure, when I'm pulling into here. So if, I'm, if I don't feel this squeezing my lat back and my elbow almost trying to tuck into my body, like imagine there's pressure here and I'm trying to pull my lat down. So you guys can mimic that. Take a fucking band, hook your fucking band around your upper arm here, literally stand over, even if you have to, even if you have to brace your hand, pull your elbow in and get used to this feeling of locking. Yeah, so we can get into this feeling of like, I'm here and I can lock into my lat, right? And then I can learn how to move my hand off this or set my hand off, but I'm able to maintain that pressure, right? So we're trying to do that, I'll do it after. We're trying to understand that feeling because people just don't connect with their lats when they're in this position. They get shoulder retraction, they get like upper back squeeze, but I want to be able to feel that kind of torque, this elbow, kind of do this little torque in and create this tension where it's like squeezing my lat down and in where its insertion is, right? So it's almost like that low lat feeling. So if I start here, it's easier for me because I understand where my base is. I'm not gonna be flared here. I'm gonna be tight in here, head press back. So I'm tucking in elbow as tight as I can and I'm squeezing my lats as hard as I can. So I can only drop this far, and then I move through. So when I come down now, I'm gonna do the same thing. My elbow is gonna release, pull back into my lats and my hands settle, I drive off. 
The only reason why my head's moving is because I'm pinching into my back so hard, I'm being forced forward and then I'm driving up through. So I'm trying to get this, if I'm holding this here, this would be, come to the front. This is me holding this wrong. Like I, you'll see them start here. Their intention will be good. My weight's back, my shoulders are down, and then they do that, right? My idea is to go here and then pull. Press. So I'm trying to tuck in, then set hand where I want it, and then pull hand back into lat. Boom. So the deeper I get on a, the deeper I get on the press, the more contracted my back becomes. The idea is to build that contraction in my back to where it stops, not where my hands, not as deep as my hands can go. So I don't want to bring my hands as deep as I can go just for the sake of bringing my hands as deep as I can go. It's as far as the shoulder, it's as far as my shoulder can retract and my lat can lock down. So my hands end up here with nothing in my hand. They might end up an inch lower with, with weight on my hand because it's pushing me deeper, right? Allowing for more contraction, right? So I'm gonna fire now. That's all it is. For you guys that have trouble engaging your lat and like really pinching your lat into your side and understanding this motion of squeezing down, you guys can take bands. There's tons of other bands. Band shit you can do to help your lats, obviously, and help your back. Well, let's say we're here. Get out of here. Fucking clips. Who uses clips? Huh? Pussies. It's either gonna fall off the bar or not. You know? So, the idea is if you come around here, actually, I'll do it over here. It's easier for you. So, if I catch this band here, I learned this from, we'll tag him after he, this guy's fucking fantastic when it comes to rehab work and fucking this is a little low but whatever you guys will get the point i'm going to tip to this side so see how my elbow is open here some people may need to base their hand they may need to hold their hand or like lock it down somewhere just to keep it stable they're not going to be able to understand this elbow bringing in without something to hold on to to do that so if i can lean over here and then i can create this tension i can pull my elbow in and hold that tension then i can do things like even hold a band Learn how to open up. This is more for shoulder mobility, but if I'm talking how to like get deep in the press, if I don't understand how to do that, like have this elbow tuck in and be able to engage in that serratus and be able to fucking engage into that lat, then how am I supposed to understand how to bench properly? So you can do it on both sides. I'm sure there's other exercises you can do, but you could do that before you train back just to set up both sides so that you understand how to create this squeeze down feeling because this squeeze down feeling of tucking lat in obviously our hands are on a bar i can't pull my elbows in all the way but this intention of tucking down and in back is the key to proper pressing so if i'm not able to do this where i'm able to be here and even get my hand loose and then flex down into my lat flex down in and hold that position and press out it just won't happen right you guys will be shoulders all day triceps all day your fucking shoulders will be fucked and it's just like these little tiny little things, especially when you get to a certain level. I'm not saying that everybody beginning training up should do this, but like if you're at an advanced level and you understand like, man, I'm fucking my chest up and my shoulder up every time I fucking train. This is why. It's because there's too much shoulder. Like a real bench press and like a legit chest press, I don't feel a fucking thing in my shoulder. I do, I've had my shoulder replaced. So I have a little bit of tension in there, but like, you guys who have never had issues, don't give yourself issues. Like, work on this stuff, right? Anything that you can work on that allows you to, like, understand how to engage psoriasis and, like, engage in here, in rib cage, psoriasis, like, pull down into lats, tuck shoulders down. I can't be up in my shoulder. There's no way I can maintain this position if I understand how to squeeze down into here. If I'm here, my shoulders will not lift up. There's way too much tension in my lower lat, my back and my mid back and scapula for me to ever do this. Because it doesn't feel like I should do that. I, it feels like I should extend things away from me. And that's what you should be doing is you're leaning back and pressing through, right? So I can't stress it enough. When you guys watch videos and you see me maybe cueing people saying, throw your head back. You're literally watching like the first, the baby steps of teaching that person how to move properly. Because you're missing the point where I'm like underneath them, like tucking their lat in. 
are pushing their elbow in, being like, okay, lift your chest now, pull your elbow in more, elbow in more, arch again here, because they start going and then they lose that arch, and then you have to get them to arch again, push, push, push. And that's why you see that guys I train, girls I train, they'll do a machine like this by themselves with two plates on the side, and they'll do, a, do it with me with 25 pounds. It's because they're just moving the weight. But they're not feeling anything. They're not engaging, they're not pushing from where they should, they're not being able to isolate what they want, right? The idea of isolating a, the isolating a movement, like we said before, is the ability to lock down all the surrounding muscle around it, not brace. I, I'm not bracing, I'm not making it tighter. I'm not trying to make it tighter. I'm just trying to hold a glimmer of tension or a, like a, a, a line of tension in that muscle so that it stays where it should and allows the other muscles to move around it. That doesn't mean holding my breath. That doesn't mean getting as rigid as I can. You know what I mean? It's just like, do I look like I'm tense right here? My back's locked like fucking crazy. If I pull my elbows back more, my, elbow, my back's in a cramp. But if I, and if I cinch back more and I lift up here and I tuck an elbow more, I get even more pressure in my rib cage and more pressure here. So I'm ready to move when I want to move, right? But I'm not tense. Like there's a difference, right? It's like, it's like saying to someone, it's the, it's the same tension as like, Laura, flex your bicep. And you go like this. There's tension in your bicep. You're like, you don't want to squeeze it more, right? But you wouldn't go like this. Fuck, fuck, you know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't imagine, you wouldn't immediately like, okay, now I'm gonna flex my forearm and I'm gonna flex my bicep and I'm gonna, oh, get it. It's like, no, I just, so that's the same thing. Just get in the position, start moving, right? The band work you guys just saw, this guy's a fantastic fucking, I don't want to call him, he's got a kin degree and all this shit. He's, I think he's Canadian maybe. If you are Scott, I'm, if you aren't, I'm sorry Scott for calling you Canadian if you're not. <laughs> this guy, Scott Bailey, TWS training. He's literally doing like this stuff here. Oh, yeah. Pulling in, pulling in, this kind of shit. Nice. Check out his page, he's good man. It's helped me a lot, like I don't know him and I don't, I'm not shouting him out like to help to promote him or whatever. Like he's literally helped me a lot with like his rehab stuff and band work, like using shoulder mobility, like getting, he does one where he's like, he's hooking his arm here and he's holding. That helped me a lot because my scapula was kind of screwed up after surgery and then like moving through this range of motion and like doing behind the back, rolling open with a band on shit. So check him out. Shout out Scott. <laughs>